Shalom, this is Ammon Yut Tayak of Piscataway, Sophia Spiritualite, the Ameru Khan Maryam. And we're here with a video about um, the Archangels, which I thought was very interesting. Um, the commemoration for them was on November the 8th. If you look back to um, on my Ortho Sister channel, you'll see the prayer for that day. It was posted late anyway, but they are in order. So um, we're just going to read this article, and it is from the OCA website. Um, and I'll try to remember to put the link in the description. So this is synaxis of the Archangel Michael and the other bodiless powers. The synaxis of the chief of the heavenly hosts, Archangel Michael, and the other heavenly bodiless powers, Archangels Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Selafiel, Jehudiel, Barashiel, and Jermiel, was established at the beginning of the 4th century at the Council of Lacedaemonia, which met several years before the first ecumenical council. I'm just going to, and I'm going to give my commentary along the way because this is my, my regular channel, so um, y'all will be used to this. Listen, as I've been saying, the Orthodox Church has all of our history and uh, uh, a spiritual history. It's, it's, it's right there. All I had to do is go and, 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 you know, free your mind and you'll, you'll, you'll find just about any dots that need to be collected are over in the Orthodox pantheon. Okay. All right. The 35th canon of the Council of Lacedaemonia condemned and denounced her as heretical the worship of angels as gods and rulers of the world, but affirmed their proper veneration. Okay, that means that as we have been saying, the angels are not the gods. They're not gods. They're, they're brothers and sisters, they're partners, they're helpers. They're not gods. And so we don't worship them as gods. And this must be obviously... Um, in opposition to some quote-unquote pagans who more than likely worship these angels as gods. So this is why you have the information about the angels across multiple pantheons if you can understand what's going on here. All right. A feast day was established in November, the ninth month after March, with which the year began in ancient times since there are nine ranks of angels. The eighth day of the month was chosen for the synaxis of all bodiless powers of heaven since the day of the dread, st since the day of the dread, last judgment is called the eighth day by the Holy Fathers. At after the end of this age, characterized by its seven days of creation, will come the eighth day, and the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. And that's Matthew 25 and 31. The angelic ranks are divided into three hierarchies, highest, middle, and lowest. The highest hierarchy includes seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. The six-winged seraphim, flaming or fiery, Isaiah 6 and 2, stand closest of all to the most holy trinity. They blaze with love for God and kindle such love in others. The many-eyed cherubim, outpouring of wisdom or enlightenment, Gen uh, Genesis 3 and 24, stand before the Lord after the seraphim. They are radiant with the light of knowledge of God and knowledge of the mysteries of God through them wisdom is poured forth and people's minds are enlightened so that they may know God and behold his glory the thrones Colossians 1 and 16 stand after the cherubim mysteriously and incomprehensibly bearing God through grace through the grace given them for their service they are ministers of God's justice giving tribunals kings etc the capacity for righteous righteous judgment the middle hierarchy consists of these three ranks dominions powers and authorities dominions colossians 1 and 13 hold dominion over the angels subject to them they instruct the earthly authorities established by god to rule wisely and to govern their lands as well their lands well. The dominions teach us to subdue sinful impulses, to subject the flesh to spirit, to master our will, and to conquer temptation. Powers, which is 1 Peter 3 and 22, fulfill the word of God without hesitation. They work great miracles and give the grace of wonder working and clairvoyance to saints pleasing to God. The powerless the powers assist people in fulfilling obediences. They also encourage them to be patient and give them spiritual strength and fortitude. 
authorities, which is 1 Peter 3 and 22 and Colossians 1 and 16, have authority over the devil. They protect people from demonic temptations and prevent demons from harming people as they, as they would wish. They also uphold aesthetics and guard them, helping people in the struggle with evil thoughts. The lowest hierarchy includes three ranks, principalities, archangels, and angels. Principalities, which is Colossians 1 and 16, have command over the lower angels, instructing them in fulfilling of God's commands. They watch over the world and protect lands, nations, and peoples. Principalities instruct people to render proper honor to those in authority as benefits their station. They teach those in authority to use their position, not for personal glory and gain, but to honor God and to spread the word and to spread word of him for the benefit of those under them. Archangels, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, are messengers of great and wondrous tidings. They reveal prophecies and the mysteries of faith. They enlighten people to know and understand the will of God. They spread faith in God among the people, illuminating their minds <clears throat> with the light of the Holy Gospel. Angels, which is 1 Peter 3 and 22, are the lowest rank of the heavenly hierarchy and closest to the people. They reveal the lesser mysteries of God and his intentions, guiding people to virtuous and holy life. They support those who remain steadfast and they raise up the fallen. They never abandon us and they are always prepared to help us, help us if we desire it. Let me ask you a question. Does this not sound exactly like what I've been talking about for over a year with the celestial hierarchy? I've never seen this before. This is exactly what I've been talking about. This is exactly what my tarot spiral is about. This is exactly what my readings are about, where I go through the planets. This is the exact order of things and how the things operate. As a matter of fact, I think I have 10 things because at the bottom um, of one list and at uh, the north and the south node would, would be the angels on one end and then the angels on the other end. So is this not exactly what I've been talking about? Like... I just feel completely and totally vindicated because I've been out here in the wilderness talking about stuff that nobody talks about, nobody's ever heard of, and here again is something that I've been talking about in the Orthodox Pantheon and has been here the whole time. So um, anyway, if you haven't seen my video on the Celestial Hierarchy or if you haven't seen my um, video on the... Um, the, the 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 roots of the tree the fruits of the tree all of that is in here this is the this is how it works this is how you go through it this is how you navigate through that hierarchy um so also this means that those people um with the hebrew mind virus who say oh i can go straight to the father so you're just going to jump past all of these hierarchies he set up so that he doesn't have to deal with you so that you can get your problem solved by the easiest person that is actually assigned to you and you jump straight to him how disrespectful is that to all these different levels of angels that are set up to handle your problems again which is what i've been saying for over a year so i mean all praises to the most high i'm so glad that this information is here all ranks of the heavenly powers are called angels although each has its own name and position by virtue of their service the Lord reveals his will to the highest ranks of the angels, and they in turn inform the others. Just like if you need something done, you go through the hierarchy. I am going to do a video, a couple videos, um, talking about how to navigate through the hierarchy. I think I'm going to make slideshows so I can explain it a little bit better. But um, I think it's this is just a sign to me that it's time to go into this. All right. Over all the nine ranks, the Lord appointed the holy archangel Michael. His name in Hebrew means who is like unto God, the faithful servitor of God as chief commander. He cast down from the heaven the arrogantly proud Lucifer and the other fallen spirits when they rebelled against God. Michael summoned the ranks of the angels and cried out, Let us attend. Let us stand aright before our creator and do not consider doing what is displeasing unto God? That is something that the priests also say during the service. Let us attend. Stand up right. That's something that the, the priests say in the service too. Um, according to church tradition, 
And in the church services the, to the Archangel Michael, he participated in many Old Testament events. Here we go. During the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, he went before them in the form of a pillar of a cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Through him, the power of the Lord was made manifest, annihilating the Egyptians and Pharaoh who were in pursuit of the Israelites. The Archangel Michael defended Israel in all its misfortunes. I'm just going to add, this is also, Michael is the one who um, what went with um, the Ark of the Covenant from uh, its location with King Solomon to its location with King David the son. Wherever you think that may have been to and wherever you think that may have been from. He appeared to Joshua, son of Navi, and revealed the will of the Lord at the taking of Jericho, which is Joshua 5, 13 through 16. The power of the great chief commander of God was manifest in the annihilation of the 185,000 soldiers of the Assyrian emperor, Sennacherib, um, for uh, or two, four, fourth Kings or second Kings, 1935, depending on which version of the Bible you're looking at. Also in smiting the impious leader, Heliodorus, second Maccabees three, 24 through 26. And in the protection of the three holy youths, Ananias, Azarias, and Misael throw down into the fiery furnace for the refusal to worship an idol, which is Daniel 32, 3.22-25. Through the will of God, the chief commander, Michael, transported the prophet Habakkuk, who was on, recognized on December the 2nd, from Judea to Babylon to give food to Daniel in the lion's den, which is Daniel 14.33-37. The archangel Michael disputed with the devil over the body of the holy prophet Mo Moses, which is Jude 1 and 9. The holy archangel Michael showed his power when he miraculously saved a young man cast into the sea by robbers with a stone about his neck on the shores of Mount Athos. This story is found in the Anthonite Petericon and the life of St. Neophytus of Doshiariu, November the 9th. From ancient times, archangel, archangel Michael was famed for his miracles in Russia, in Vol Volokomsk, Volokomsk, Patericon is a narrative of St. Paphanitus of Borov and the account of a Tartar tax gatherers concerning the miraculous saving of Novgorod the Great. Therefore, Great Novgorod was never taken by the Hangarines, when for our sins the goddess Hangarine Emperor Batu devoured and set the Russian land aflame and came to Novgorod and God and the most holy Theotokos shielded it with an appearance of Michael the archangel who forbade him to enter into it. He, Batu, was come to the Lithuanian city and came towards Kiev and saw the stone church over the doors of which the great archangel Michael had written and spoken to the prince his allotted fate. By this, we have forbidden you entry into great Novgorod. Intercession for Russian cities by the most holy queen of heaven always involved her appearances with the heavenly host under the leadership of Archangel Michael. Grateful Russian acclaimed the most pure mother of God and the Archangel Michael in church hymns. Many monasteries, cathedrals, court and merchant churches are dedicated to chief commander Michael. In Old Kiev, at the time of accepting of Christianity, a cathedral of the Archangel was built and a monastery also named for him. Archangel cathedrals are found at Smolensk, Nizhny, Novgorod, Starista, at Great Ustug, beginning of the 13th century, and a cathedral at Skavyask. In Russia, there was not a city where there was not a church or chapel dedicated to Archangel Michael. This is why they don't want us to go to Russia, by the way. One of the chief temples in the city of Moscow, the burial church in the Kremlin, is dedicated to him. 
Numerous beautiful icons of the chief commander of the heavenly host are also in his cathedral. One of these, the icon Blessed Soldiery, was painted in the Domitian Cathedral of the Moscow Kremlin. The saintly soldiers, Russian princes, are depicted under the leadership of Archangel Michael. We invoke Saint Michael for protection from invasion by enemies and from civil war and for the defeat of adversaries on the field of battle. He conquers all spiritual enemies. Holy, Script Holy Scripture and tradition gave us, give us the name of the archangels. Gabriel, strength or power of God, herald and servitor of divine omnipotence, Daniel 8, 16 and Luke 1 and 26. He announces the mysteries of God, rather she, but <clears throat> Raphael, the healing God, the cure of human infirmities, who is in Tobit 3 and 16 and 12 and 15. Uriel, the fire or light of God, enlightener, who is 2nd Edris 5 and 20. We pray for him to enlighten those with darkened minds. Selephiel, the prayer of God, impelling to prayer, 2nd Edris 5 and 15. He prays to God for mankind. I'm guessing that this is the same as Haniel, okay? Oh, Uriel, of course, is... um. Uh, same as uh, Metatron or um, Enoch, right? Enoch, uh, Raphael. Um, hmm, who's Raphael? <clears throat> well, when we got seven here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so Raphael and Michael are all are usually interchangeable. So Raphael, I would put him on Sunday. Um, with Michael, um, sometimes Raphael and Ur Uriel or um, Metatron or Enoch are also interchangeable. Um, all right, Selephiel, um, the prayer to God. Oh, I already said that one. Um, I think that's probably Haniel or Anahiel. Jehudiel, the glorifying of God, encouraging exertion for the glory of the Lord and interceding for the reward of efforts. I think that's probably the same as, um, um, Sephikiel, which is Saturday, um, Solomon, um, Barashiel, of course, we know her distributor of the blessings of God for good deeds and treats the mercy of God for people. And that would be the same as, um, Jupiter, um, Sadkiel, Zedek, um, Gaira, um, Zedekettlebog, and then we have Jermiel, the raising up to God. I would say that's the same as, um, um, Tuesday. Um, come on, brain. Um, Adam, um, I should have the list in front of me, but I don't, um, Tuesday, y'all know what I mean, Adam, Mars, energy, raising up to God, okay, Samuel, Samuel, or, um, Chamuel, whatever, okay, on icons, the archangels are depicted according to the character of their service. Michael tramples the devil underfoot and his left hand holds a green date tree branch and in his right hand a spear with a white banner on which is outlined a scarlet cross or sometimes a fiery sword. Gabriel with a branch from paradise presented by him to the most um, to the most holy virgin or with a shining lantern in his right hand and with a mirror made of jasper in his left. Raphael holds a vessel with healing medications in his left hand and with his right hand leads Tobias carrying a fish for healing, which is Tobit 5 through 8. Uriel, in his raised right hand, holds a naked sword at the level of his chest and his lowered hand a fiery flame. Selephiel, in prayerful posture, gazing downwards, hands folded on the chest. Jehudiel holds a golden crown in his right hand, in his left a whip of three red or black throngs. Barashiel is shown with a white rose on his breast, her. Jermiel holds balanced scales in his hand. Of course, that, that definitely is um, Mars energy. Samael, um, Zamael. 
Adam. Anyway, each person has a guardian angel. That's in Matthew 18 and 10. And every nation also receives its own guardian angel from God, which is Daniel 10 and 13. When a church is consecrated, it also receives a guardian angel, um, which is Palladius Dial chapter 10. So I just wanted to put this into the ley line because it's, you know, just one of those things, you guys, you know, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how I have this information. I have no understanding of any of this stuff. Um, I think it's also helpful to note that, um, uh, these things mean something. All the pictures mean something. You can tell who is, who is, the, is, is based on what's, what you can see in the pictures. And I will link to this so people can take a closer look at it, pictures they've seen, stuff like that. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful. Shalom to each and every one of you, and we'll see you in the next video.